An ordinary student was given a task to look for an ink brush, but accidentally got extraordinary powers when he was chosen by a soul of a famous poet. One day, Lu was noticed by his teacher that he was not paying attention to the class, so he asked him a question. Unfortunately, Lu could not answer the question, so his classmates just laughed at him. One of his classmates, named Jing, volunteered to answer Mr. Zhu's question, and then he pushed Luo to apologize to their teacher. But Luo did not want to do what Jing told him, so when he tried to get away from Jing, he accidentally hit the table. Because of this, the glass and an ink brush fell, luckily, he caught the glass quickly. He seemed impressed of his quick reaction, but he soon realized that he had stepped on the ink brush. So Luo was immediately escorted to the director's office to discuss the mess that happened in class. When they arrived at the office, Zheng was also there and pretended to apologize for what he had done with Luo because he wanted to make them think that he was a good student. The director scolded Luo, and in his anger, he suggested that Luo should stop coming to school and drop the elective course. But suddenly, Mr. Zhu spoke, and he explained the importance of the ink brush that Luo had stepped on. It turned out to be a pineapple texture wolf hair brush. Mr. Zhu gave Luo a chance, so he asked his student to find a brush similar to it. The next day, Luo immediately started searching for it, but he had been to 10 flea markets and still could not find anything similar to the broken brush. While he was looking on the displayed ink brushes, he saw Jing. He wondered why his classmate was there, so he followed him. It turned out that Jing visited his uncle Zhao's shop to also ask if he had a pineapple texture wolf hair brush. Although his uncle did not have this ink brush, he said that he had ordered someone to look for it in another shop. Luo overheard their conversation, and he found out that Jing wanted to show to Mr. Zhu that he was a better student. A few moments later, the person that Zhao had ordered to look for the brush had found one, and it was said to be located at the Changchun thrift shop. Zheng was so happy that he invited his uncle Zhao to eat first, so Luo took advantage of this opportunity to go to the said shop and get ahead of Zheng. And when he was there, he was faced by a beautiful woman, named Rong. He could not believe that he would see a young woman there, then Rong said that her grandfather owned the shop and she was just helping to look after it. Luo did not waste any time and immediately told Rong what he was looking for. Rong took the ink brush and said that they had to wait for her grandfather if he wanted to buy it. Suddenly, a man also entered the shop, and Rong already knew what he wanted. He introduced himself as Chang Ching and from the Zhuga family. He wanted to talk to Rong's grandfather, named Mr. Shiran. But Rong just told him to get out of the shop which made Chang Ching annoyed and threatened Rong. Luo intervened between the two, so Chang Ching was forced to use his power. Rong and Luo were pushed by a strong force, and Chang Ching successfully got his target which was also an ink brush. But Rong had no intention of letting him go, so she also used her power to attack him. She used her brush spirit called Snowstorm Ink Brush. To counter this, Chang Ching also used his brush spirit which was also called Cloud Rider Ink Brush. The two of them fought, so Luo decided to leave the shop. When Rong attacked, she hit the item that Chang Ching wanted to take which was a brush spirit. But this brush spirit flew towards Luo's chest. After what happened, Luo accidentally got the power of this brush spirit. Chang Ching immediately attacked him, but Luo just easily dodged it. When he attacked again, Rong had a chance to use her power and hit Chang Ching. But he did not stop and made another attack, so Luo quickly created a barrier. Chang Ching was forced to retreat, and Luo weakened that caused him to fall. When he regained consciousness, he was on a boat and found himself in an unfamiliar place. He was wondering how he ended up there, and also noticed his strange attire. A few moments later, a water tornado suddenly appeared causing him to fall into the water. That was the moment that he woke up because it was just a dream. He noticed the pink handkerchief, then Rong and Mr. Shiren suddenly entered the room. Mr. Shiren told him that he had a fever because of the deadly coal artifacts in the shop that made him weak. But he immediately told Mr. Shiran of what he had witnessed including the ink brush that entered his chest which caused him to lose consciousness. Mr. Shiran laughed at this and said that he might just had a hallucination. He suddenly remembered why he went there, so he also told this to Mr. Shiran. But according to Mr. Shiran, the brush that he was looking for had been sold earlier to a man named Jing. After hearing this, he felt disappointed and decided to go home. But before he could even leave the shop, Mr. Shiren gave him an ink brush in exchange for what happened to him. He was advised to keep it because it was more valuable than what he was looking for. 
When he came to school, he was bothered because he failed to get the pineapple texture wolf hair brush. But he suddenly remembered what Mr. Ju told him that apart from getting an ink brush, he also wanted Luo to learn something. And since the ink brush that he brought was better, he thought that Mr. Ju would be more pleased with it. He immediately headed to Mr. Ju's office, but Zheng was on his way there too, so they went to the office together. When they got there, Zheng immediately showed the ink brush that he brought which made Mr. Ju happy. He thought that Luo did not have an ink brush with him, but they were surprised when Luo showed him the ink brush that he was carrying. When Mr. Ju touched it, his hands were shaking because he could not believe that he was holding a special brush. He immediately tried it, and he was laughing because he was so amazed by it. Since Zhang was confused by their teacher's reaction, Mr. Ju reminded him of the four virtues of an ink brush. Luo suddenly mentioned the meaning of each virtue, and when Mr. Ju praised him, Luo wondered why he knew these informations. While Mr. Ju was mentioning another reason why he was amazed at the ink brush that Luo had brought, Luo entered into an imagination that he was writing a poem. When he uttered another information, he was able to give what Mr. Ju wanted to convey. Apart from getting an ink brush, Mr. Ju also thought that he learned a lot right away, so he praised Luo. At night, he went to the computer shop where his friend, named Yen, was working. After a few minutes of playing, an image suddenly appeared on his computer. He looked at it and was able to read the ancient characters written on the stone tablet, and this surprised him. After a while, he heard that his friend was arguing with other people, and when he went to them, Yen was facing a group of men who were already drunk. This group attacked them, so the two were forced to fight back. When Luo was about to be hit by the bat, he unintentionally used his power again. He managed to knock down the leader of the group, and when he was about to be retaliated by the others, he quickly teleported away from the enemies. Since they could not reach him, the enemies just aimed at Yen, so Luo came down and beat them. When they witnessed how strong Luo was, the enemies became afraid of him, and they were forced to retreat. And like before, Luo became weak, but he did not lose consciousness. While he was walking back to his computer, he remembered what happened in the shop and the changes in his body, then he realized that the things that happened to him were not a dream. He thought that it might be because of the ink brush, so he thought of a good codename for himself. But he lost a lot of energy, causing him to fall asleep in the computer shop. He dreamed that he was in another house, and a few moments later, he saw a man approaching him. This man uttered a suicide note, but Luo suddenly woke up when this man stood in front of him. He decided to go home, and as he was walking outside, he suddenly heard a voice calling him. When he saw the scary creature behind him, he quickly ran away. As he was on the road, the creature chasing after him suddenly disappeared, but he was shocked because it turned out that it was right in front of him and immediately strangled him. He tried to punch it, and he could not use his power. Fortunately, Rong came there, so this creature released him. Rong asked him where was the ink brush that they gave him, and he he told her that he had given it to someone else. When the enemy was approaching them, Rong decided to finish him off. It returned to the form of an ink brush which according to Rong was called a brush puppeteer. After that incident, Luo had many questions about brush spirits, so Rong decided to bring him to her grandfather. It was here that Luo found out that the ink brush that was given to him was supposed to be his protection to ward off the brush puppeteer. Luo said that if they had told the truth, he would not have thought of giving the ink brush to someone else. Mr. Shiren said that he did not expect this to happen to Luo, and he did not want him to be involved in danger. In order for Luo to better understand the current situation, Mr. Shiren decided to tell him a story. It was about the owner of the pen burial and an unknown writer between the Qin and Han dynasties. And during those times, people burn books and kill scholars. The pen burial owner witnessed the sad fate of the scholars, so he promised to himself that no talent would be wasted because he would protect them. For this to happen, he collected the souls of the scholars and turned them into brush spirits to be inherited in the future. And the brush spirit that was in Luo's body was Li Bai which made Luo happy because he was known as the Poetry King. After a few moments, Mr. Shiren suddenly stood up and fought a man who was the chief of the Zhuga family, called Mr. Li. Rong told Luo that this man was the one who wanted to get rid of him. Rong tried to attack the unwanted guest, but Mr. Li easily blocked it. He retaliated, so Luo planned to block it to protect Rong, and fortunately, Mr. Shiren blocked the attack quickly. Mr. Li told Mr. Shiren that the seven ducks of City Guan should go to him. Since Luo did not know this, Rong told him that these were the seven superior brush spirits created by the pen burial owner, and one of them was Li Bai's green lotus brush. 
Mr. Lee intended to get this brush, and to acquire it, the host must be killed first, and the host of this brush was Luo. It was only a few moments when Mr. Lee knocked down Mr. Shiren, and when Mr. Lee made another attack, Luo took action. But Mr. Lee immediately retaliated, and when he was about to kill Luo, Mr. Shiren quickly blocked him and managed to counter the attack. Mr. Lee decided to retreat, but he warned them that he would return. After the fight, Mr. Shiren told Luo about the possibility that many danger would come to him. So they had to find a way to separate the brush from his body. But at that moment, Luo needed to learn how to control the brush spirit so that he could protect himself in case something bad happened to Mr. Shiren. He promised that he would study it, and since Mr. Shiren still needed to recover, Rong volunteered that she would be the one to teach Luo for the meantime. The next day, Rong and Luo went to school to borrow poetry collections written by Li Bai, and she wanted him to remember all of them. When they were able to borrow the books, they went into a quiet place so that Luo could focus while reading it. While Rong was explaining what Luo had to learn in order to better understand the brush spirit, Zheng was not far away from them. He heard about the brush spirits, and he also became interested in looking for them. He immediately started searching, but no matter what he did he could not find any clue about the brush spirit. After a few hours, Luo got tired of the things that Rong asked him to do, so he asked for a break. But she just told him that if the Zhuga family attacked him again, he could rest forever. He thought that Rong might knew someone who could help him, but she said that because of the power of the Zhuga family, no one dared to fight against them. Rong gave an important information on how he could quickly control the brush spirit. He could do this once he could find its origin and nature. Zheng talked to his uncle Zhao to ask for another favor. He wanted to talk to the woman that they met at the antique brush study gathering, named Miss Qin, because she might be interested in the brush that he would show to her. In a place called Wei Village, the woman mentioned by Zheng wandered around as if she was looking for something. After a while, she saw what she was looking for, and it turned out to be the Wei Mansion. But when she was about to enter the gate, the guard suddenly confronted her because it was a private building. For this reason, she pretended that she got lost while looking for the restroom. Before she left, she took a selfie with the big gate. At night, she began her mission to enter this mansion. She easily defeated the guard at the gate and was able to enter the mansion. Only a few minutes later, she succeeded in getting her target, causing all the guards to be alerted to arrest her. Luo took Rong to Yan's computer shop to introduce her to his friend. Then they decided to use a computer so that he could show what he was good at. They played Luo's favorite game, but he did not expect that Rong would just beat him. Because of this, Luo could do nothing but continue what Rong wanted him to do. She wanted him to recite Li Bai's poems, but he also needed to understand them. But he fell asleep and dreamed again of the suicide poem that he kept dreaming about, then he suddenly woke up. Since Rong also fell asleep, he put a blanket on her. As he watched her, he thought that he might be able to protect himself because he was able to sink the green lotus brush vestige with him, and he had recited a lot of Li Bai's poetry. He just needed to recover the coreless ink brush, so that Rong did not need to protect him anymore. He called Mr. Ju to borrow the coreless ink brush, but he found out that Jing also borrowed it. But he also thought of where he could possibly take the brush, so he left immediately. He went to Uncle Zhao's shop, but when he got there, he was surprised to see Zhao lying outside. He was about to call for help when Zhao suddenly woke up and pointed to the shop. That was the moment when the brush spirit inside his body reacted. When he peeked inside, he saw Miss Qin, and Zheng was in front of her who seemed to be in pain with what she was doing to him. It turned out that Qin refined the coreless ink brush that was already inside Zheng's body, so that he could become her brush puppeteer. So Luo thought of a way to help Jing. He thought of using the Zhuga family to scare Qin. To make it more believable, he also showed the power of his brush spirit. Because of what she witnessed, Qin felt scared and immediately apologized. Luo was amazed because he proved to himself that no one wanted to be against the Zhuga family. But when he called Mr. Li as his master, it was here that Qin realized that he was just lying. Because of this, Qin immediately used his angular ink brush to catch him. He wondered and thought again what he did wrong. Although Qin did not know what brush spirit he was using, she still decided to kill him to get his brush spirit. She used the power of her brush spirit to strangle Luo. It was here that Luo decided to recite the suicide poem that he always dreamed of, and this caused him to acquire a strong power to free himself from the strangulation. 
After this, Qin had learned that Lu had the green lotus brush vestige as his spirit brush. He recited Li Bai's poem again to attack Qin, and they started to exchange attacks. Qin was forced to use a sword, but it did not work after Luo's next attack. When Luo was about to attack again, he suddenly ran out of energy. Qin also suddenly disappeared, but she left behind the brush that she stole from the Wei Brush Library. Luo took it, but when they went to the computer shop, he did not know that it had fallen. Rong tried to check on Zhang's condition, but the only thing she could do at that moment was to slow down the refinement. Zhang's father suddenly came there because Zhao called him. They took Zhang to the hospital, and he gave money to Luo to show his gratitude for what he did. While Luo was telling Rong what happened earlier, he remembered the brush that Qin had left earlier. It was when he realized that it was no longer in his pocket. Yen saw this, and when he opened the container, the brush suddenly came out, so when Luo and Rong went to him, the brush went right into Yan's body. Rong looked at the brush holder, and she immediately found out that a brush spirit had entered Yan's body, so they just waited for him to wake up. As soon as Yen woke up, he realized that Luo was hiding something. He talked to Luo first because he wanted to confirm whether Luo was good or bad. He thought that they were secret agents, and that he might be their new member. He immediately decided to go to Zheng at the hospital because he was worried that someone might attack Zheng again. When they arrived at the hospital and while they were waiting for Zheng to wake up, the power of Yan's brush spirit had been awakened after he saw blood. But a few moments later, there was suddenly a thick smoke that slowly approached them. It came with colorful strings, and anyone who touched them entered into an illusion. When Rong fell into it, Luo was able to use his power and immediately saved her. As the strings attacked again, Rong quickly created a shield. But after a while, the enemy used brush puppeteers, and the barrier was immediately broken. They fought the brush puppeteers, and while they were busy fighting them, the enemy took the opportunity to attack Rong with the string. Luo immediately approached her, but when he was able to save her, he was also targeted and attacked by the brush puppeteer. He was thrown towards Yin, and when he caught Luo, its wounds suddenly healed. Rong was also thrown to Yin, and he also unknowingly healed Rong's wounds. When he witnessed this, he had the courage to fight the brush puppeteers. Whenever he received damages, he just used his power to heal them. Until he got close to their real enemy, named Chun, who was also a member of the Zhuga family, so he beat him. Chun tried to attack, but it did not work on Yin. When they got close, Chun quickly grabbed Yan's hand to try to heal himself, but the opposite happened. After that, Chun just ran away, so they let him go. That was the moment when the thick smoke gradually disappeared, and they found out that they were the only ones who could see it. Luo went to Zhang's room and saw Mr. Zhu in there. When he talked to his teacher, he also knew that Zhang became like this because of the Zhuga brush. He wondered that Mr. Zhu called the coreless ink brush in a different name, so Mr. Zhu explained why it was also called a Zhuga brush. After they talked, Luo accompanied Mr. Zhu out of the hospital first. When he came back, he saw Rong on the stairs, so he approached her. When he came closer, he accidentally overheard her conversation with Mr. Shiran, so he found out that they were hiding something from him. He immediately confronted her, and it was here that Rong admitted that Mr. Shiran planned to use the green lotus brush vestige inside in his body to track down the seven dukes of City Guan. When Rong returned home, she immediately informed her grandfather of what had happened. After hearing it, Mr. Shiran said that if Luo did not want the easy way, they would use force instead. Then he asked his granddaughter to take him to his room because he wanted to rest. After Rong left, he took a small container under his bed that contained a paper slip. Luo was annoyed as he remembered what Rong had told him. He suddenly met Qin after a few moments, so he thought that she was targeting Jing, but it turned out that she was after him too, since he also took the brush spirit that she left behind. She knew that he was not a member of the Zhuga family, so she thought that he was a member of the Wei family which he immediately denied. She was surprised, so she told him that they should work together to get the seven dukes of City Guan. Qin added that she could also heal Jing, so Luo had second thought about her offer. He had a suspicion that Qin might just use him too, but he agreed as long as she could heal Jing first. She immediately pulled him to take the things that she would use to Jing. When he and Qin were in the car, she took something from it, but it turned out that it was just a way for her to use a weapon on him. Luo quickly lost consciousness, and he was immediately put in the car. Right after they left, Rong came and was carrying the slip of paper that he was going to give to Luo. 
So when she entered the hospital, she only saw Yin. When Luo regained consciousness, he tried to use his power, but he was unable to do so because of the talisman stuck to his chest. In this situation, he used his voice and ordered his cell phone to call Yin. But he was not able to talk to him because Qin dropped him off to take him to Farron Temple. Qin intended to kill him in that place so that she could get the green lotus brush vestige. When she attacked, the monk, named Bid, blocked it. He knew Qin because he learned that she stole the brush spirit from the Wei Brush Library. He instructed Zhu to fight against Qin, so Zhu immediately followed this command. The two of them fought, but Qin struggled to keep up with Zhu. So Qin used Luo as a shield, so she could attack Zhu. After that, she had a chance to escape. When Bid approached Luo, he saw the talisman on his chest, so he learned that Luo also had a brush spirit. Luo tried to deny it, but Bid also knew that the green lotus brush vestige was his brush spirit because of C.U.I. Howe's poem which was written on the talisman. Luo even thought that they were enemies, so he tried to use his power, but Bid stopped him. Luo did not force himself to fight them, and just talked calmly with Bid. They also discussed Mr. Shiran because Bid also knew him. He told the story of what happened 20 years ago when Mr. Shiran made people fight, and then he suddenly disappeared. After a while, they felt that there were other people around them, so Zhu quickly went to check it. It turned out to be Yin, so Luo immediately stopped the fight between the two. Luo was surprised that Yin had tracked his location, so Yin showed his cell phone which the call was still on. Because of this, he also heard the conversation between Luo and Bid earlier. So he also took advantage of this opportunity to find out what was the name of his brush spirit, so Bid said that it was the eyebrow drawing brush. Suddenly, they heard that someone entered the place, so Bid used his power to hide them. They saw Changqing carrying a man, and since Luo had no idea what he was planning to do, Bid told him that Changqing was planning to take the brush spirit of the man. This was also what Qin wanted to do to him earlier. When Changqing was about to stab the man, that was the moment when they were forced to show up. This made Changqing very happy because he now had the chance to get two seven dukes of city Guan. Based on what he said, they found out that the man lying on the ground also had a brush spirit and one of the seven dukes. When Changqing attacked Luo, Xu moved quickly to block him. Changqing used his power, so Bid was forced to create his shield. The battle between Changqing and Xu continued, and since Changqing could not keep up with Xu, he used one of his strongest attacks which caused Bid's barrier to break. Changqing attacked again, and even though Bid used up his remaining prayer beads, it still did not work against the strength of Changqing's attack. When he attacked Luo, Yen tried to stop him, but he also could do nothing against the enemy. Changqing had already started to get the man's brush spirit, and he successfully got it. He was about to do the same to Luo, but Yen suddenly attacked him. Yen showed to Luo that he had the power again, and he wanted to use it to Changqing. As soon as Changqing grabbed Yen, Yen took this opportunity to use his power. He accidentally hit the brush holder, so the brush spirit spontaneously came out of it. Luo thought that Yen's brush spirit could turn back time and not to heal. Suddenly, Changqing pulled Luo while he was still struggling to catch the brush spirit. But they were all surprised when the brush spirit suddenly entered Luo's body. That was when Luo learned the name of the brush spirit, and it was the pupil marking ink brush. Using this and the green lotus brush vestige, he was able to release a dragon and attack Changqing. Changqing knew that he could not fight Luo anymore, so he decided to retreat. After the fight, Bid examined Luo's body and confirmed that there were two brush spirits inside its body. This had never happened before, so he informed them that according to the legend, if a host took a lot of brush spirit, he would die quickly. While Luo was having problem with this, Yen remembered that Rong wanted to give Luo something. She said that it was a safe method to remove the brush spirit from his body. When they read it, it mentioned the pen burial, but they did not quite understand it, so Bid read it too. Based on Bid's understanding, it was mentioned that there were two places that used to be called pen burials. To make them understand it better, Bid decided to take Luo with them to the Wei village because the elders also knew something, and there were also many ancient books there. When they arrived at the terminal, Bid instructed Yen and Zhu to go to the two pen burials in Yongxing Temple and Green Sky Nunnery. They had to do this to know the pen burial's condition, and they would meet in the Wei village once they got the information they needed. When they arrived at the Wei village, Bid's uncle, named Dingwa, met them. Then they went directly to the chief of the Wei village. 
When they met him, Luo found out that he was Bid's father. After a few moments, Luo showed the two brush spirits inside his body, and Bid's father could not believe it either. But he thought that it was a good opportunity to get the green lotus brush vestige and combine it with his autumn breeze ink brush. Bid did not expect that his father would do this to Luo, so his father said that he was only doing this to strengthen the Wei family. After he returned to his room, Dingwa spoke to him to oppose his act of collecting the seven dukes. Dingwa wanted them to focus more on enriching their village. He begged him to think carefully about his decisions. After a few hours, Bid's father returned to Luo and Bid to release them. He said that he thought of letting Luo and Bid decide for themselves. To make up for what he had done, he told them the real power of the pupil marking brush. This brush spirit had the power of prophecy. He added that if they ever get lost on the path, it could help them go back in the right direction. But every time the host asked for an answer to the question, his hair would fall out, and if the hair ran out, it would be the death of the host. Luo asked him what he should do next, so Bid's father gave the answer, and it was a pen burial poem. Bid thought that the pupil marking brush might mean that removing the brush spirit from Luo's body was the right way. A few moments later, someone suddenly attacked Bid's father that caused his immediate death. Just in time, their housemaid came there, who screamed at what she witnessed. She immediately thought that Bid and Luo were the perpetrator of the crime, and quickly asked for help from others. It was here that Bid thought of the possibility that they had been set up into this crime by somebody. They immediately left there, so the residents of the Wei Mansion did not catch them. Dingwa also came there, and when he found out that Bid and Luo had left, he ordered his men to close the entrance and exit of the area. Meanwhile, Luo and Bid were currently in the Wei Brush Library because this was the only place that Bid could think of to hide. He added that there was a secret passage out of the mansion. When they entered the very room where the brush spirits were hidden, they saw traces of sword fight around it. They thought that Qin might have done this when she was trying to find the tunnel out. Bid found the way out, but it was closed. Because of this, Luo used his power to destroy the door. When they were close outside, Bid decided to investigate his father's death first, so they decided to part ways. A few hours later, Luo and Yen met at the inn where they would stay for the meantime. Little did they know that they were being watched by people from the Zhuga family, and Chang Qing was also there. Their mission was to avenge the death of their master Feng Bin. The next morning, Xu came to them and they went to Yongxing Temple. As they approached the grave itself, Luo suddenly felt a terrifying presence. Then it was here that Chang Qing moved to attack them. Xu quickly chased him, and Chang Qing's companions, named Shurjio and Ihui, also appeared to them. Ihui was able to quickly made Yen enter into the power of his brush spirit, so Yen was surprised that he had become an ink brush. According to Ihui, in order for Yen to get out of there, he must defeat him in poem interpretation and rhyme analysis. Shurjio was also attacking Luo, so Luo wondered why she was doing this to him. Shurjio said that they were going to take revenge for their master Fang Bin whom Luo did not know. Luo tried to use a sword, but it was easily broken. When Shurjio attacked, Luo quickly created an armor, but it was quickly destroyed too. Shurjio attacked again, so Luo created a dragon to try to get away, but she once again stopped him. Yen thought of a way to outsmart Ihue, and he succeeded. So not long after that, Ihue also gave up and Yen was able to get out from its power. As Luo and Shurjio continued to fight, Shurjio hit a tombstone where the creature that Luo felt earlier suddenly appeared. It attacked Shurjio, but Luo was forced by the pupil marking brush to save her. For this reason, Yen and Ihue also ran towards them. Ihue decided to leave there and so did Luo. But the enemy attacked them non-stop until they realized that they had just returned in the same spot. While they were hiding, Ihue thought of working with Luo to build a strong defense. After a few moments, the enemy suddenly changed its appearance and became a monk. It repeatedly mentioned the name Xiao, so Ihui found out that this was Bian Tsai who was a disciple of Master Jiyong. Since they did not know why Bian Tsai was so angry at Xiao, Ihui told the story of the two in the past. The two became best friends until Xiao betrayed Bian Tsai. The spiritual power that Bian Tsai was releasing grew even stronger, and it was here that Yen noticed something on the pupil marking brush. It seemed to be pointing towards the pen burial, so he thought that it might want them to go there. Ihoi remembered that the pen burial built by Master Zhiyong was full of Wang's spiritual power. This was probably the reason why Bian Tsai still remembered the things he regretted.
So they decided to destroy the pen burial to release the spiritual power that was still there. That was when Luo realized that the pupil marking brush wanted to save Shurjio because he was their only hope to destroy the pen burial. Hihui was left to maintain the barrier, and Yen joined Luo and Shurjio because they could use his power. When they got close to the pen burial, Shurjio immediately attacked it. After this attack, a lot of ink brushes scattered around, but Biensai was still there. After a while, a brush spirit suddenly appeared from the lake, and then the green lotus brush also came out to approach it. They found out that this brush spirit was also one of the seven dukes. It wrote the inscriptions on the orchid pavilion, causing Ihui to know that it was the heavenly cloud brush. When the brush finished writing, the anger that Biensai felt faded, and he also disappeared. Ihui took advantage of this opportunity to take the heavenly cloud brush, but Mr. Shiren stopped him. He was about to try to attack Mr. Shiren, but the old man got ahead of him. Raul also appeared, and Mr. Shiren took the heavenly cloud brush. Luo realized that he had been used by them because he believed in the paper slip that was given to him. In his anger, he attacked Mr. Shiren, but the old man returned this attack to him. Raul immediately approached Luo to help him, and Mr. Shiren left there. Raul was going to tell him something about the paper slip, but Luo sent her away and said that he would not believe whatever she was going to say to him anymore. After hearing this, Raul could do nothing but leave. A few minutes later, Luo, Yen, and Shurjo passed out due to the amount of energy that they used in the fight. Changqing came there just in time and wanted to kill Luo and Yen, but Ihui stopped him. Instead, they brought them to the Zhuga mansion to interrogate them about Master Fangbin. Changqing had a problem because he was sure that the two were going to point him as the murderer of Master Fangbin. To avoid this, he decided to go to the jail to kill Yen and Luo. But when he came there, he was surprised to see Shurjio who had already killed the two. When he approached Shurjio, she showed him the wallet that she got from Luo. He thought that it was Master Fangbin's wallet, so Shurjio was wondering because she knew that he had never seen Master Fangbin before. So he reasoned that he had read the name on the ID, but what was written on it was a different name. That was the moment when Luo and Yen got up, then Mr. Fei and Ihui also entered the room. A few minutes ago, while Luo and Yen were being interrogated, they insisted that Chang Qing was the one killed Master Fangbin. To prove their innocence, Luo suggested using the pupil marking brush. That was when they planned to set up Chang Qing, so when he tried to leave, Luo and Yen hid him behind. When Changing regained consciousness, Mr. Fei used his brush spirit to make him confess who he was serving. But when Changqing was about to mention the person behind it, something happened to his body. Yen quickly approached him and tried to save him, but his power did not work. Mr. Fei thought that there might be an extra taboo inside Changqing's body that would only be activated if he mentioned their mastermind. After they got out of jail, Mr. Fei told Luo that their clan master wanted to talk to him and thank him for catching the traitor among them. It turned out that he had never seen him before, so he realized that they only fought a fake one before. When he came face to face with the clan master, he was also younger than the fake one, so he immediately knew that Qin was lying. To show the clan master's gratitude, Luo would be granted whatever request he wanted. So he took this opportunity to ask how to remove the brush spirit without dying. But chiefly did not know anything about it, so he just advised him to go to the green sky nunnery. He also knew that there would surely be many who would come after him, so he warned Luo to be careful of the Death Brush Scribe. Even with the combined forces of the Zhuga and Wei families, they had not been able to defeat this group yet. There was also information that what Mr. Shiran did before had something to do with the Death Brush Scribe. One night, Bid called Luo to send them out of there, and they would just meet at the Green Sky Nunnery. Shurjo overheard their conversation and said that she wanted to help them get out of there. It turned out that Mr. Fei found out that the other traitor of the Zhuga family was in the Green Sky Nunnery, so Mr. Fei would come there too. But he did not want her to come, so she would find a way to go there too and punish the traitors. Luo was happy about this, and they immediately went to Yen. When they were about to leave the gate, the new chef of the Zhuga family, named Chao, was there to stop them. They quickly ran out, but they just got back inside the gate. They found out that Chao had the power to reverse their location, so even though they reached outside, they were easily sent back inside. So they thought of another way to get out of there. Luo came up with a plan, and it was for them to split up. Although Chao was able to bring Luo and Shurju back, he lost sight of Yin who was already behind him. 
They successfully got out of there and immediately left for Yongzhou. As they were about to board a taxi, Luo received a call from Bid. Luo found out that he was currently in Yongzhou Hospital because he suffered severe injuries. Because of this, he let the two go ahead to the Green Sky Nunnery and promised that he would follow. When he arrived at the hospital, Bid told him everything about his investigation in the Wei Mansion where he discovered that his uncle was bribing other elders. He thought at first that it also had a connection with the Zhuga family, but when he followed the brush burial scribe of the Wei Mansion, he discovered that he met with the brush burial scribe of the Zhuga family. He heard them talking about their master, so Luo remembered what Chang Qing was about to mention before he died. They thought that the traitors of the Zhuga and Wei families might have come together in the same group. Meanwhile, when Yen and Shijiao arrived at the Green Sky Nunnery, they saw Mr. Fei and Ihui facing the traitors of the Zhuga family, named Imin and Chun. Ihui suddenly rushed to attack, but Chun got ahead of him. It was only a few moments when someone who looked like a monster suddenly came there. It turned out to be Jing who attacked Mr. Fei, but he was unable to hit him. Zhang got up, and their fight continued. After a while, Mr. Fei saw that Chun was controlling it, so he targeted Chun. But he did not succeed in pulling his brush spirit because Xing quickly got close to him. When the enemy attacked again, he got ahead of him, but Emin suddenly attacked him. The fight continued, so Shijiu was forced to join as well. But Chun quickly used his power on Mr. Fei, causing Shijiu and the others to stop their attacks. When Emin became bussy to Mr. Fei, it was the moment when Shijiu used her power. As a result, they were able to retreat, but Jing suddenly attacked Yin. While Yen was fighting Jing, Shijiu was also fighting Yimin until they retreated towards Mr. Fei. When Yimin's group attacked, Luo suddenly came and stopped the enemies. Luo and Yen clapped their hands, but Yen was surprised because Luo seemed to hand him something. When Luo and Shijiu were about to prepare to attack, Yimin suddenly attacked them. Yimin knew that Luo was there to remove the brush spirits from his body. But if he gave the brush to Emin, he would not kill Luo's companions. Since Luo had no other choice, he agreed to what Emin wanted. They accompanied him to the back palace, and when they got there, they had him use the pupil marking brush to activate the four stone dragons. With this, he was able to open the Huai Su fantasy. He was told to go in because it was the way to remove the brush spirits inside. When Luo entered, the traitors laughed because they just lied. Emin knew that the gatekeeping dragons would just attack him, and this would just cause the death of Luo. A few moments after he entered the Huai Su fantasy, the dragons confronted him. But suddenly, a monk appeared and called him, Li Bai. He introduced himself as Huai Su, but like him, he was not exactly Huai Su. When they entered his home, he gave Luo something to drink that healed his wounds. Then they discussed Luo's purpose there. Huai Su mentioned that all those who tried to enter there were chased and killed by the dragons. Luo realized right away that Emin really planned to kill using the dragons so that they could get his two brush spirits and Huai Su's brush spirit. He begged Huai Su if he could use his brush spirit, he thought that he might defeat Emin if he had the power of the three brush spirits. But according to Huai Su, he did not have a brush spirit. Although the owner of the burial brush tried to offer him to turn his soul into a brush spirit, he did not agree on it. Instead, he created the Huai Su fantasy and used his soul to guard it. It was not long when Luo noticed the leaves with cursive writing songs. He knew that Li Bai also wrote cursive writing songs, so he just begged Huai Su to help him understand them. He was thinking that through this, he might be able to defeat the enemies. While Yimin and Chun were waiting for Luo, Chun thought of approaching Shijiu first. When he was about to hold her, he was suddenly kicked by Yin. It turned out that he used the prayer bead that Luo gave him earlier, so he escaped from Emin's power. And since he regained his power, he immediately used it on Shijiu and Mr. Fei. Their group fought with the enemies again while they waited for Luo to come out. A few moments later, Emin was able to use his power on Yin. He took advantage of this opportunity to attack Mr. Fei, but Yin quickly blocked it. Shijiu immediately came to Yin and Mifei, then Yin begged them to save Luo. When the enemies rushed towards them, Luo came out of the Huai Su fantasy. The enemies could not believe that Luo was still alive, and Mr. Fei could feel the Zen heart. Emin's group rushed at the same time, so Luo used a cursive writing song to beat them. Zheng tried to attack, but he was unable to deal with Luo's strength. Emin and Chun continued to attack, but Luo blocked them all. 
until Luo decided to attack and the enemies could no longer move because of the strength of his power. When he got down, he immediately approached Yi Ming to ask him who was their mastermind. But what caused the death of Bid's father also happened to Yi Ming, and when Chun saw this, he quickly ran away. Before he died, he mentioned the name Han Zhong. When Yin approached Jing, it was here that Luo remembered the name that Mr. Zhu mentioned when he visited Jing while he was still in the hospital. Because of this, he also remembered the things mentioned by the people he met since he got the green lotus brush vestige. So he was confused about what was happening to his life. This is end of the last episode of Spirits in Chinese Brushes. I hope you like it and give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel so you won't miss new uploaded videos. Thank you for watching.